nice shaping of phrases, nice sound, and, and, and it, you know, I get some good shape in everything, so that's really, really good. Couple of things. Um, first of all, this is just a nerdy thing, but I always slur that. Okay. It's, it just doesn't sound as fluid, and we're always looking for ways to make lines like that very fluid. Since you have articulation to measure before in the triplets, to sort of contrast that with um, uh, with a slur is also really nice. And because, frankly, that's a very awkward run mm -hmm. on the clarinet, right? Yes. And so it doesn't. It sounds bumpy. Mm -hmm. It's just a smoother thing. Now you might have to work it out. at the start and you were kind of nervous, what was that affecting in your playing? Just, was it affecting air, embouchure, um, what? Um, a little bit of everything, mostly my air and my fingers though. <laughs> okay, so what, were, what was happening to them? Um, they, they were getting, well my air wasn't spinning as quickly as it probably should have been and my fingers were kind of shaking a little. They were so. shaking or tight, which one? Shaking. Shaking. Okay. Yeah. So. Shaking is okay. Shaking in, and this is a good thing. If any of you get nervous, who gets nervous when you play? I do. Do you? You don't. Do you not? I never think of you getting nervous about playing. I get nervous when I play sometimes. I'm not nervous playing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best I've ever played. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's really wonderful. Um, Think if, if you can kind of translate and it's a little trick of your brain, if you start to get that um, shaking, just think of it as adrenaline and you're excited. And you know, it's amazing if you, if you don't try to go, oh my gosh, I'm getting nervous, I'm, I'm getting more nervous, I'm getting, that makes it worse. If you just say, oh look, my fingers are shaking, I must be excited. <laughs> it really does help. I know it's a crazy thing and there's a lot of psychologists that study this kind of stuff. And I just find by sort of embracing it and changing it to something positive, like this is going to give me more energy when I play. And you know what? Most likely nobody's going to notice. I didn't notice that you were shaking. So that's good. I noticed your fingers were tight and you're going like this a little bit. But I didn't notice shaking. So see? It's something you might feel more than You have that kind of body language, okay? So one of the worst things that you can do when you start to feel like that is to kind of like, okay? Because it just makes it worse. So you have to just kind of maintain your poise and, and keep your air going. Now, it sounds to me like your reed maybe warped or dried out. Yes? I'm or honestly not? not sure. 
but something has happened to it, right? Yeah, like I've been trying to blow warmer into it during this, but probably it's dried out. Right, and so one of the things that you might want to do is to get a little, always have a little, uh, you know, cup or some, some little plastic container with some water in it that you need to change on occasion. Um, but then you can kind of dip, dip your reed in it. Now you might not want to leave it in the whole time, but at least you know you can dip both sides and you can kind of keep it a little wetter or you can keep it in your mouth, um, which is um, kind of gross to those who don't play the clarinet. We're, we're used to it though, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. It's like what's the big deal? So um, that's, that's one thing. And sometimes even when you go from one building to the other, um, reeds don't sound the same or they can also you know, kind of warp as you're sitting there. So that, the key is to try to keep it moist and probably not enough will happen if you are just doing that by, by blowing air through, through it. You're going to have to actually take it off if you like the reed and, and either keep it in water or your mouth or something. So with, especially with new reeds, the idea is to try to keep the humidity level as stable as you can. And um, like 40% humidity, 50% humidity is really, really good. Um, then after you let them soak and let them dry over the day, um, hopefully in a little humidified area, you do that same process. You don't play them. Like maybe two, three days in a row, just stick them in a cup, take them out, put them, and let them dry. Then after that, I, I, for, for students, I just say it's the 369 rule, which is where you um, play each read for three minutes um, the first day. And then I mark a little dot. I mark each read one, two, three, four. I, you know, I kind of do that. Sometimes I also have another system where I'm actually numbering each read up to like you know 10,000 whatever, and and then I mark a little bit about each read. And I, I have kept a book before, but you guys don't need to do that. You can just mark each one one, two, three, four, five, and then I put a little dot. That means three minutes. If there, I add another dot the next day, that means I'm up to six minutes. Third day nine minutes, and then I'm kind of ordering them as I go along. And then after that, I start, I kind of play them. I suggest that you have two or three at the same time and you rotate them. If at the end of your playing time, you can find a little bit of water from the fountain or if you keep a cup, like I was talking about with you or something, then um, do dip it in because our saliva actually causes reeds to break down more quickly. The bacteria does. So, um, you know, that is my simplistic thing that I tell for beginners and intermediates. Very simple. Then, of course, there's the flattening of the backs with a little piece of wet or dry sandpaper, and then you get into like the reed knives and all that. But for, for beginners, that's what I recommend. Yeah, it's pretty simple. little bit about breathing. You're laughing. Is this a, a familiar this is why we This is why we did this, because my breathing was a lot worse when I started this, when I started, like... Yeah, so you're working on it already, right? Okay. So um, there are a couple of things I just want to talk to you about, because I think when you kind of um, are a little bit more sort of in, in control of what you're doing with your air, you're going to even relax more. You're going to feel more relaxed when you, when you play. Um, however, I will also say, when we get nervous, the first thing to go usually is our, our air. And so we have to really be conscious of that, and we have to kind of like really think, you know, when I, in fact, you, if you saw my Mozart part, um, it says at the very top, in letters like this big, air, okay? And it's just a reminder to me, okay, I'm nervous, but I got to think about my air. So I got to mind my P's and Q's. I'm not going to think about the fact that I'm, I'm nervous. I'm going to think about something positive, which is I'm going to think about my air. Okay? So we can all, all kind of do this. But, you know, Mr. Hasty, my teacher, um, uh, used to teach this. He said there were full breaths, 
and half breaths. And half breaths are the inhale part, okay? And so there are a lot of times in music when we can only, we only have time for an inhale. And plus we're playing the clarinet, so we're exhaling while we play the clarinet, okay? So a lot of times we need that inhale, which I mark sometimes with a little I. Then there's the exhale part. And actually the exhale, we like to think of as the beginning of the breath. Ever thought about that? So but the, the, in, the inhale is the, the second half of the breath. Hmm. So. so you, things that um, might really make a difference. I, I look at you, and here, let me see your hand. Yep, you still have rings, mm -hmm. Im imprints on there, okay? Yeah. And I look sometimes and I see the whites of your fingers. If you do that, you're going to get that, Yep. okay? So um, working on, and I'm not going to get into this, I'm just making sort of a quick observation, working on little less squeezing is going to really help you in a lot of ways um, in terms of just technical prowess and, and fluidity of finger and and also when you have something slow like that instead of hearing yeah. the slap actually um, in orchestra you can hear that and in, 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 you can hear it in recording sometimes we're all guilty of it. I, I am guilty of it sometimes too, but I work very hard to make sure that I'm, I'm coming down at the same time, yes, but trying not to slam down. It's yeah. all, uh, when you look at it, this doesn't really change. I okay. mean, sometimes he pulls his cello away because he's a little bit of a hand. But when he's uh, really playing, yeah. I mean, for a lot of people, there, even though he's moving his head and he's kind of doing this, it's, this relationship yeah. doesn't change. Okay. And part of this, you know, squeaking, even though it's, it's probably kind of funny stuff happening yeah. in, in the air, may go away if you're just a little more still. So right. I am going to actually... I'm going to touch right here, and I'm going to ask that you kind of be aware okay. and try not to move from here. Go ahead. Oh, it's getting tight. Oh. You know, when you trill, can you just leave this alone? Yeah, use, your, use the, the, this stuff.
different genres and, and so forth. But as, as a general um, sense about how to trill, um, which, you know, it, it, forget about like which note to come from, which note to start on and all that. Let's just talk about the trill itself. Some years are better than others. And it depends on the finger, right? So the key in this is not to play them as fast as you can. not appropriate, okay? And so, but you do want it to be even. So they need to be sort of, you can try metering, you know, just really metering them. There are some players, especially flute players get into this a lot. We don't as much, but we, they talk a lot about how many actual turns are there? Do you do four? Mm -hmm. How many do you do? I don't know, right? Do you know how many you do? Uh, no. Yeah, so <clears throat> you might want to be able to work on that. It, not that you would necessarily do it, but you, you might want to. And, and the, the idea is that you actually hear each note of the trill as though it's a musical part of the music, you know, it's just part of the music.